I'm just fascinating by all the pictures that Jamil has shown me, all the stuff that you do. Is there something favorite that you've done? And how did it even start? Like, how do you just all of a sudden say, hey, so-and-so in the NBA, here, here's a shoe for you? <laughs> uh, Man, that was a long time coming. I, I had been painting sneakers for like 12 years up to the point where I actually like broke through in the NBA. So uh, the first pair I did was for my boy Carl Anthony Towns when he was still probably in his second year. And, uh, you know, he's a, he's a rising star. And um, he kind of took a chance on me and said, you know, paint some of my stuff, see, see what you can do. And uh, we just ran with it. And every single time I painted a pair, you know, he wore it on the court. And uh, probably my favorite one would have to be the one that kind of changed my life. And that would be a... Uh, I believe it was 2018. I did a pair of Jason Nike Hyper Dunks. He wears a size 20, so really big shoe. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I painted that for him. He wore it. It went absolutely viral. They were they were putting my name and my my brand and everything all over Sports Center, ESPN. Jamil Muhammad and Jeff Cardozo dive into the hobby, which is sports cards, trading cards, as well as all other collectibles. Right now on the Mealy Pod Hobby Podcast. Live from the Coach's Podcast Room at Spurrier's Gridiron Grill. Hey, everybody. It is that time once again for the Mealy Pod Hobby Podcast. Coming at you from the podcast room at Spurrier's Gridiron Grill. He is Jamil Muhammad. I am Jeff Cardozo, and we are certainly happy you have joined us. Another great guest. We have got uh, Kickstradamus coming at you. If you don't know what that means, that means you better stay tuned because it is uh, something legit that they're going to want to hear, right? Yeah, Kick Shadamas, his name is Sal. He's a good friend of mine, but he's also just an amazing, amazing business guy in the collectible space and artist. And so we'll get into that. But kind of, kind of like you, just a, you know, a, a savant of all things, Jeff. Yeah, I'll, uh, well, Devontae Adams will be playing for all teams here uh, pretty <laughs> shortly. Uh, news came out earlier this week that uh, he is now reunited. And it feels so good. Him and Aaron are uh, Aaron Rodgers. Together. They won a Super Bowl back in the day. Probably not going to happen, as I'm sure there's many Jet fans that listen to this knowing that it's not going to help because they can't be any good. But it could be some uh, interesting things happen to the hobby, maybe. Yeah, it, you know, Aaron Rodgers cards and just Aaron Rodgers in general has been such a like interesting study, right? So, you know, when he was on the Packers, he was, you know, up there. I mean, he's playing course during times with Peyton Manning and Brady and stuff. So sure. you're always having these comparisons to the other big name autographs but now he's kind of the lone vet i guess he could throw Kirk cousins in there but he's so far different you know what yeah. I mean, time wise so you know as 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 he's kind of traversed and he's done this stuff once he left the packers there was the jets fan phantom that came in his jets card started coming out but again he tore his achilles in the first game yeah so this season is the real telltale for it and I, i'm really in, interested to see like you know is there a, a sentiment a growing sentiment that he's Kind of more of a problem. Did he cause the Sala thing? You know, there's all this backstory going on. And his card values have come down a little bit. So it will be interesting to see what moves forward now. Wins always help. But if the Jets start winning and Devonta Adams is their X factor that they need, um, I could see his stuff crescending. But the other side of it is what happens if Devonta Adams is hurt, isn't what they think he is. Yeah. And then, you know, they, they're a subpar team. They're 6-10 and 10 or something going into the end of the season. I think uh, the, that his stuff might take a big hit. It might, might be tarnished in a way, you know, some of his rookie stuff. Um, he still won the Super Bowl. He's still an amazing quarterback. But I, I do think you're going to see that, that drop off because of the tail end of the career. You know, we saw it with Favre in the Jets, you know what I mean? And, and, and just kind of these things as they, as they, as they pan out. So um, we'll see. I, I guess I always wonder that because obviously your boy, Tom Brady, uh, just retired and that stuff's going to be iconic for forever. But it seems like we, at least on this show, and certainly what everybody's looking for in their wax and, and everything else is these hot rookies and these young and up-and-comers. And, you know, they want those first couple of years of whatever this person is going to be. And then because it is a decade or two decades and they start to fade away, like what happens to those cards? Like they just... You know, like like you mentioned, it just you, you wonder if you know. Hey, this guy was so hot 15 years ago. Yeah. He had a, a decent career. Maybe is going to sneak into the Hall of Fame someday. But does anybody even care about those cards anymore? Because they're always looking for that next up and coming guy to to try to to buy. Yeah, I think you're on 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 hitting the head on the nail, uh, hitting the nail on the head. The yeah. the thing with these cards is like it's always the momentary, right? It's yeah. always the hype. It's always what's driving that. And I think that really carries lasting value. 
we, we see some things once in a while, like for example, Tom Brady cards are, are starting to trend up. Why are they trending up? Doesn't make any sense, but they are. We see things like that that happen once in a while. Jordan is always very interesting, his rookie card, because it's kind of volatile right now. It's at peaks with the star rookie card and the Fleer rookie yeah. card. So, you know, why would those guys go up and down over time? And I think it just has to do with, you know, market demand. Maybe there's manipulation on some sides of it with people buying and selling things in these high, high, high end auctions. But, um, you know, a, a, a good a good representation is we just bought a collection and it had a bunch of Roethlisberger, Eli Manning, um, Philip Rivers, that whole that whole crew. And I'm looking at these patch autos. I'm looking at all these really cool rookie card auto craft cards, thinking how much they were back in the day, 700, 1,000. And this was pre-COVID. And now these cards are 100, you know, 150. Mm -hmm. Drew Brees is another guy, like, really falling off. And I think it has to do with just the relevancy of, of how relevant yeah. you are. And maybe with Brady and Manning, these guys, they're they're still around. You, you know, we know their names. We see them on things. And that that, that kind of gets the, the juices flowing for people buying again. But um, it is a great question. And I, I don't think there's like a, a bad thing to holding those cards. I think there's always going to be a bottom out point where they're not going to drop below a certain point. Like, I don't think Rivers cards will ever drop below 50 bucks on rookie patch autos or something like that. You know, so I think that there's an element that you're always going to have a safety net. But then again, what happens down the line Passing a player sometimes that always helps. I'm not not trying to knock on sure. as a young guy, <laughs> but but I'm talking about older players, so uh, it's it's interesting to kind of think through that. Um, mix. Oh, go ahead. No, no, no I just because that's what I would say. I was like, so it's almost like then, as you start to see the twilight of their career, Aaron Rodgers, for example, it's probably time to then maybe get rid of his stuff yeah. because once he's done and the next couple of years, it's just kind of faded away and he's not there anymore. Then uh, it seems like the cards just sort of vanish as well. Sure. I would and, say, and you have that just like it's fascinating to hear that because you go from a thousand dollars and everybody thinking, "Well, I've got these cards. Yeah. This is what they're always going to be." Yet they go down. Yeah. When you probably think over time it's going to go up, and that's not the case. Yeah, it's it's not. I think with the modern market, I think you're starting to see that more that yeah. '90s, 2000 kind of era. It makes me think a lot about kind of values and stuff. And I, maybe I'll flip it on you a little bit with sure. baseball because we're at the end of the season now, and you, you know you have you know four teams left, but. Everybody else is done. You know what I mean? And I'd love to hear from your take, kind of thinking through it, just from just from a play standpoint, who do you think really fell off this year in baseball? Like, I, 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 I ask that because I look at values of baseball cards. They're already starting to kind of come down in the market. But who are some guys that you might have thought maybe had a hot year the year before but have fallen off a little bit? Yeah, I think there's a couple that I can think of. If that's the case, you had Corbin Carroll, yeah. and Rookie of the Year, and – probably top five in the MVP voting and then just that sophomore slump or whatever it might be. I mean, Bo Bichette, I know mm, a guy a couple a years one. ago that, uh, you know, we, we kind of talked about in the shop and yeah. I would go in and say, I'd like to get a couple of these cards. And then you think he's going to be that guy, maybe even Vlad uh, Jr. a little bit. Um, so I think those are the ones. And then a guy, I, I guess I always want this guy to do good because Jimmy, I, I pulled a, uh, I don't even remember the brand, but it's, you know, a thicker jersey card of Spencer Torkelson. Yeah, and it was he's like a, another one of great ten. One. Yeah. He's a number one pick. I'm like, yes, this thing is <laughs> gonna be awesome. And then the guy goes from number one pick to having an okay year to then sort of nothing. Yeah, Torkelson's a, a really good example because he was so highly touted in the Bowmans and all yeah. the stuff when he was coming out. Um you brought up Corbin Carroll. He finished a year well, I think, but his values have come down so much. And I think you're you're also, again, knocking on something here, the door that, that people need to understand, especially if you're getting in the hobby for the first time or, or it's, it's a new thing to you. When you buy the guys on that peak, you know, for example, Corbin Carroll, when he runs Rookie of the Year, mm -hmm. and he has that slump the second year, there's no way of really recouping that value, getting back to those levels, unless he has like some MVP caliber season and, you know, just tears it up, which I don't not say they couldn't do it, but it's very difficult to, to see. And then Torkelson, you know, you have all the guys in Bowman buying all this stuff, going ham and grading all this stuff and getting all the gems, putting it away. And it's like, what's what we his do? future now, yeah. you know? Well, even... Evan Carter. I mean, that mm. World Series run last year. And, Amazing. You know, this just stud that I think a lot of people had never even heard of. And then he's hurt this year. They don't even make the playoffs. And, you know, Wyatt's now the big name. Langford there in Texas. So it's just, it is crazy, like the fascination of it all. Um, but I know, uh, gosh, Ellie De La Cruz a few years ago. I mean, he's still probably relevant, though. Yeah. He just continues to to be pretty good. But it just seems like a lot of those big names that, you know, these studs that people were looking for that are really, really hot don't necessarily live up to what they're able to do. Yeah, and, and kind of throw a wrench in it, too. Sometimes people think success in baseball also drives price. 
Okay. And I would say MVP seasons, things like that Otani is doing on a level that no one's ever seen before. Sure. But but the you know Skeen's an example. I know it's tricky because he's a rookie this year. But I would say winning a championship is not always you know conducive to values going the other way either. Mm -hmm. I think it, it, a lot of people in baseball. You look at Trout for so long. He never won a, a title. He never really. I mean never really made far in the playoffs, but he always had these incredible seasons and his values recognize that. Now, that was the first six, eight, 10 seasons that he was involved in the major leagues. Now we're looking at Trout and his stuff is at an all-time low. Um, it's crazy to think, you know, he's probably Mr. Baseball for the last decade for, yeah. you know, here, a domestic born player. But again, that's another guy that you have to look at and say, man, I invested heavily in Trout maybe back during the peak. Where is it at now? Could it ever get back to those values? Probably not. You know, I mean, if it does, maybe it's a twenty-year hold or a thirty-year hold to get to those points. So this, it's just it's just a one-on-one. -on -one, I think when you're when you're looking at cards, we're in a very unique time right now with all the sports crescending at the same time. Um, Connor Bedard, you know, he's been lighting it up in in the NHL, and so people are, are buying his cards again. Is that a thing to do? Because he was already so high, right, uh, from his rookie season, and you have to think some of these things through as you make those decisions. Or you could just simply say it's fun and, and you don't really care. That's what I, I, I talk to a lot of people about, and they yeah. just they enjoy the players. So that's what the hobby is cool, you know, in the sense that you can you can do that and have fun with with the players that you collect. And you know, some guys will, will amount to stuff, and some guys won't. All right. So speaking of uh, something else, you can do. Are you. Uh... You told me that there's a, uh, a video game <laughs> business out there that might be now uh, trying to sneak into this uh, grading world. What's going on? Yeah, so it came out a while ago that GameStop, the chain that has video games and Pokemon and all that, was buying cards. They were buying PSA-graded cards. They had a um, buying system set up or that you could bring it in and get either trading credit for video games or whatever, or you could get um, money. And initially, people were like, what in the world's going on? It's a video game business. Um, I actually met one of the guys who was hired to do this at the National. He's a really nice guy that GameStop brought on. And they're they're pivoting, right? They're diversifying, which is great. I think it's 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 great to see this innovation in shops. There's a huge chain. There's a huge network of GameStop. So uh, just recently, it came out that they are going to now also not just buy your PSA-graded cards, but they'll help you grade your PSA wow. graded cards. So you can submit your cards, you can provide your cards to them. Um, and I have, you know, two quick thoughts about this. The first one I'll be positive and that's, you know, great. I'm, I'm glad that there's a way for people who don't have access to card shops and graders and all that to just take it somewhere and get a card graded. The flip side of this, the, the negative side that I see is, um, I, I don't know if this is going to result in a lot of people coming into the hobby and then exiting very soon because, they submit a card that they thought was going to be a 10 and they get a seven back mm -hmm. or an eight back. Right. And that's the truth when it comes to the sports card shops. We're educating people. Right. We're teaching people. We're going through the intricacies of how to grade. We're reviewing cards for people, um, talking about why you don't grade with this company or that company or what this may be better not to send the PSA. So there's some elements there which I hope we're not creating too shallow of a a customer base in the hobby. Maybe it does lead where they these kinds of people show up to our shops and then we can kind of take it from there. But it's an interesting dynamic that game video game stores now are um, grading cards through PSA. <laughs> yeah, that is that is crazy. But I think that is obviously, you know, the advantage of these local card shops because you're going to be the person that says, hey, yeah, dude, there's no way you should grade that thing. Like it's it's awful. But somebody because it's in their mind, looks on eBay right. or someplace on the internet, says, hey, I have that card, it's this, and you're going to be disappointed a lot without that knowledge. Yeah, no, you're, you're, you're right on that. I think um, what happens sometimes is, is people get blinded by the fact of there's a price point that they found on eBay yeah. or, or someone told them, like, just grade it, you'll get a 10, and they get stuck in that. And that's, that's just kind of learner. You're just going to deal with it. But, you know, when it comes to this, this grading side, there's also that element of handling cards. So when someone does submit the card to, to GameStop, how is it handled? Mm -hmm. Are these employees that have no idea how to handle cards? Are they going to, you know, they, how are they going to treat the cards? Could they damage the cards? How are they going to ship the cards out? So there's a lot of elements to this that we have, I mean, we, I won't say we've perfected it in our shop with our grading, but it, there's always things that are changing. And so to get that kind of know-how and expertise and authenticity, I think is going to be a learning curve for GameStop. So they're probably going to have some losses on that front end. Um, but it will be interesting to see. I, I, I'm really I'm really looking forward to kind of seeing where that develops and, and how that grows. Well, speaking of uh, damage, I think, uh, you know, everybody around these parts still uh, trying to get through the uh, the effects of, of Helene and certainly Milton, the last storm that yeah. came through. We were fortunate here in Gainesville to not get it as badly, but 
gosh, just a couple hours south in Tampa and St. Pete and Lakeland and all these places. Gosh, the Trop doesn't even have a roof anymore. So imagine Crazy. if the, uh, the Rays had made the playoffs. What would they have uh, done? That would have been cool. They'd come up to uh, They'd Gainesville. They'd come play in Gainesville, right? play at Condren. But, and they'd probably go play in Miami. Yeah, that's what I would uh, I would assume. But, um, you know, certainly Helene got through there, and um, you've got the, uh, the, the card show in Carolina coming up. I know that's pretty far east. I don't know if that affected anything up there. But, again, we wish all the, the best for all that. But – How's the the show coming? You're only a few weeks away now, and Clemson's all of a sudden good in football again. Yeah, top 10. Yeah, it's not even a few weeks. It's like uh, 10 days. So uh, next week I'll be in South Carolina. We'll have... Uh, we'll do our show obviously remotely, uh, but it's uh, it's 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 a lot. You know, hosting a card show is one thing, but then also the details that go into that, right? And so one thing I'm learning in, in our team that runs the Upstate Card Show is just simply that there is so much that can always be added on to these these events. And we want to we want to have a great show, and we I think we're gonna have a really really good attendance, you know, for this show. I think we're gonna see a lot of people show. Um, that area is just ripe for for the, for, for, for collectors. Mm-hmm. Um, I do know that the hurricane has affected a lot. I mean, even till up until last week, people still didn't have power in South yeah. Carolina. I don't even want to talk about Western North Carolina. Asheville was only a, a, a hour away from um, uh, our Spartanburg shop, and the truth is. I had contacts for card shops there. I've called a few times. Like, there's, there's no lines. There's no. You wow. can't. Even, you don't even know what's going on up there still. So, I um, you know, thoughts and prayers. You you hope that the, they can kind of rebound from it, but it, it just seems like a lot of destruction. So we're gonna do some unique things with the show in in the sense that we're gonna um, have some uh, s- 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 some uh, donations and things that we'll we'll put towards relief efforts. Awesome. Um, one thing I will say for anybody wanting to start a show. When you deal with autograph signers, it is not what you think it is. Uh, you think that it's going to work out and it's going to be super easy breezy. It never is. Uh, whether you work with the agent, whether you work with the player, whether you work with the family of the player, I've gone through the ups and downs of the last really six months uh, dealing with this. But we do have uh, two really cool signings. We have Javi Lopez, who uh, is, of course, the 90s Braves. That's your boy. We'll have him on the podcast next week. And then also um, we are going to have um, uh, TJ Moore, DeMonte Capehart, and... Um, uh, the linebacker Sammy, uh, his name's escaping me. Who are going to be signing on the Sunday? Okay. So they'll be there. It'll be a, the Clemson faithful will come out, and I'm TJ Moore is a pretty stud wide receiver freshman. So interesting to watch them. And as you guys know, Clemson football is relevant right now, and they could win the ACC. You yeah. know, looking at how that pans out, which means they're going to be a playoff team. You know, and uh, so it'll be super interesting to see uh, Phil Moffa. You know, did our first show, and he was he's great, great guy, and just watching him kind of you know develop is amazing. Club Nick starting to play well for yeah. them um and so so excited excited to see the show excited to see people at it uh it'll be it's been consuming me for the last you know couple weeks so almost there jeff i'm sure it has all right we're gonna take a break and then uh, you'll be consumed by kickstradamus it'll be a uh, fun interview you'll learn lots of things but only if you come back here on the mealy pod hobby podcast Albert, Alberta, I understand you were witnesses to a crash can you tell us about the accident When you're in a crash, it's important to get witness statements immediately after the accident. Whether you're in a car, truck, motorcycle, scooter, or even a golf cart accident, at Meldon Law, we won't back down. This is Jamil, owner of the Mealy Pop Shop, Gainesville's home for collectibles of all sorts, including every single type of sports cards, whether it be Panini, Tops, Leaf, Upper Deck. We have it. Come on in, get yourself a box, a pack, get yourself some supplies, get into our breaks. Get your Pokemon, get your Yu-Gi-Oh! All the other different kinds of TCG products that we carry and shop are always fully in stock. You can find our stuff on our website as well, mealypops.com. That's another way you can interact with the store, or you can just come into the shop. We're located off 39th Avenue by I-75 behind Walgreens and Sunnies. Stop on by. We're open every Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And you can check us out on our social media platforms, Instagram, TikTok, whatnot, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. We'd love to see you. Come on out to the shop. Have some fun. Be a part of the card community here in Gainesville. And always, go Gators! All right, we welcome you back to the Mealy Pod Hobby Podcast. Jeff and Jamil still here inside a Spurrier's Gridiron Grill in the podcast room. And we're going to go all the way across the country with our next guest. He's in a pretty sweet spot himself. You'll see it here in a second. But, you know, Jamil's been uh, hyping this guy up. He's been telling me how awesome he is just to... 
just amazing things in the industry. So I am excited to talk to Kickstradamus. Yeah, we're going to we're going to bring on Sal here in just a minute. We uh, I got to know this fella back in uh, Tampa a few years ago. It was during like the COVID craziness, and he came okay. to one of these events that we held uh, called Collectors Con in Tampa. And the first thing that struck me about Sal was. Number one, he's just genuine. He's just down to earth. There's no no flaking uh, with this guy at all. But more importantly, when you start to see his art and the, what he's been able to do, he's not a a, a businessman. He's a businessman, right? Like as Jay Z <laughs> says it. So uh, this is uh, it's exciting to see um, Sal and just his emergence. So I think we got him on virtual. Uh, Sal, you there, man? Yeah. Hey, man. How's it going? What's up? What's up? How's South California doing? How? No, you're you're not in South. You're Northern. You're north. Sacramento. I'm North now. I was South. Yeah. It's nice up here. It's starting to cool down, so we've been waiting for that. Send some of that over to us, man. Yeah, we need some it. of that cooling. I'm just straight humid here. Um, well, man, I, I'm, thanks for being on the podcast. I know you got 1,800 things that you're always doing, but for our listeners and our viewers, um, be as long as short as you want on this, but like, who is Kickstradamus? Tell the people who Kickstradamus is. Man, um, well, for the longest time, I was just known as the guy that painted shoes for NBA players and stuff like that. And I was doing that for probably about three years straight. Um, but I've been able after COVID to kind of like really rebrand myself and, and kind of break into the entire art scene. Uh, I wanted to be known as an actual professional artist, not just some guy that paints shoes. So where we are today, um, you know, I'm just kind of a jack of all trades, man. I, I have my card art. I have my designer toys. I have my custom sneakers. I have my apparel, you know, uh, there's just so many. I even have my own trading card set. So there's like, there's like a lot of levels, you know, you know how they say it's like an onion. So that's kind of what we got going on over here. Yeah. Keep, uh, keep peeling it. You got some art on your arms too. You probably can't do that yourself. So you, you trust somebody else to be able to do that. Oh yeah, man. Uh, I made sure that if I was going to get art on my arms, there's going to be some, some really good artists. So some of these have won a lot of like competitions and, and really reputable artists from, from LA area really. But yeah, I mean, I haven't got one in a long time, but I have sleeves on both my arms. I have my legs. So, yeah, I like to collect that art, too. <laughs> Sweet. Um, well, we had uh, Josh Luber on a, a few weeks ago, so it kind of piqued my interest on shoes. And, you know, it's obviously in your name. And we're uh, we're a Jordan brand here at uh, the University of Florida. So I got some sweet Jordans. And, you know, for baseball, they, they make some custom stuff with the alligator print. And I'm just fascinated by all the pictures that Jamil has shown me, all the stuff that you do. Is there something favorite that you've done? And how did it even start? Like, how do you just all of a sudden say, hey, so-and-so in the NBA, here, here's a shoe for you? <laughs> uh, Man, that was a long time coming. I, I had been painting sneakers for like 12 years up to the point where I actually like broke through in the NBA. So uh, the first pair I did was for my boy Carl Anthony Towns when he was still probably in his second year. And, uh, you know, he's a, he's a rising star. And... Um, he kind of took a chance on me and said, you know, paint some of my stuff, see see what you can do. And uh, we just ran with it. And every single time I painted a pair, you know, he wore it on the court. And uh, probably my favorite one would have to be the one that kind of changed my life. And that would be, uh, it, I believe it was 2018. I did a pair of Jason Nike Hyper Dunks. He wears a size 20, so really big shoe. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I painted that for him. He wore it. It went absolutely viral. They were they were putting my name and my my brand and everything all over Sports Center, ESPN. So it was a really, it was a really uh, pivotal like moment in my career. So that that's why that's my favorite. So Sal and I have something in common now. We've both been on ESPN. He was for art. I was for getting a card spiked at me. So um, <laughs> I'll take it, though, um, from Gronk. But, uh, man, listen, I, I I love the fact that you have – and this is for our listeners and viewers on this one. Sal has created really the ultimate mashup kind of trading card. You know, he's, he's cornered this market in doing these cards so well and – whether it be, I mean, TV shows, film, sports, anime, horror, I mean, you have taken everything and you have such a creative, you know, touch on everything you do. I'd, I'd like to hear from you, man, and I, I know we've talked about this, put you on the spot here a little bit, but I want the Nostradamus, Kickstradamus answer. Where do you think the future is for, like, mashup cards, celebrity hot cards, hype cards? You tell me. 
I don't know, man. It's it's. It, I don't think there's a limit to where it can go uh, if it's done right. Uh, I just kind of threw my hat in the ring with the with the high end luxury card art world uh, that you guys see going on out there. Uh, you know, piggy banks and all these other dudes. Uh, I saw. I, I've been doing the card thing, you know, for a long time, and I've had my own trading card set for over a year now it's officially been over a year but for it to be a little over a year and me have released seven sets that have been successful uh all just from here from my office you know everything made here no no huge companies backing it nothing just everything here and i've built this amazing team of 20 plus artists you know that 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 are part of uh, these sets that i've created uh i don't think there's a limit bro and and i hope you know, this kind of stuff like continues to grow. Uh, my luxury card arts have, man, that th those have gone crazy in these past few weeks. Uh, the secondary market is looking crazy, thousand, two thousand dollars per wow. card. You know, it's, yeah, it's it's getting crazy. It's getting up there, but um, yeah, man, I, I I'm I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to use my platform to help that community grow and. Uh, from, from from the looks of it, a lot of people are happy for me to be in there, you know. Uh, I really didn't go public with it for a while because uh, I didn't know how my fans and, and, and the people were going to react to it, you know, coming from a completely different uh, space than what I'm normally doing. But everybody loves it and it's doing really well. So, uh, you know, I, I, got, I got probably like four different streams of income with different types of products going right now, four, four to six. <laughs> And it just keeps growing, you know. So it's it's awesome. Well, and and that's the reason why you got an article in Forbes, man. So uh, congrats <laughs> on that. I, I read that. It's uh, pretty special stuff. And obviously, the brand, as you're talking about, continuously has only grown and grown. You know, I, I always am fascinated by how you figured out you could even do this. You know, some people just you know realize one day they can throw a ball a hundred miles an hour. They can shoot it or dunk or do all this other stuff like. Were you sitting in elementary school one day and just started like doodling? Like, when did you figure out this was your thing? I've been drawing since I was like four. So around like four, five, six, I was already like making my own little comic books. So I knew like everybody knew that I had something right. Um, and I looked a lot. I looked up a lot to my uh, one of my step cousins and he, he was an artist. So. Uh, you know, just watching him do what he do and then like him kind of like teaching me a little when I was younger, I was able to run with it. And, uh, you know, I didn't start doing sneakers till I was about 25. So I was I was living on my cousin's couch, you know, <laughs> broke, uh, just scrapping. And uh, I already had my son. So my, my oldest son. So it was kind of like I had to figure out something. And and my cousin, who was a sneakerhead. Uh, came up to me one day. You think you could fix these Jordans? I know you do art. You could paint and stuff. So maybe you could try this. So that that's kind of how it all started. Is just uh, restoring sneakers for people, and, and it just blew up from there. So he he just mentioned his son. I got a chance to meet Little Kicks in Southern uh, Southern California at a Collecticon. Okay. And you want you think Kicks is a hustler? You should see his son, man. <laughs> he was he he was at a booth next to us, and he would come like, "Yo, Mealy, Mealy, Mealy," and he, "You want to buy this? You want to trade this? You want to buy this?" And it just he was wheeling and dealing, man. So like father, like son, uh, little kicks might be uh might be uh, coming for the crown there with hustler. He's he's uh he's doing some big things, but um, I'm sorry, man. yeah, <laughs> the business it runs in the family. So speaking of business, and thinking about you, and, and I know I've experienced the fruits of this too. So many people are still opposed to live streaming sales. And I'd love for you to just talk about how live streaming sales on whatever platforms they are have really like magnified your brand, but also another world that a lot of people, you know, as they listen to this podcast, they listen to the hobby and the, the, the newest things that are coming up. You've really captured discord and utilized that to propel, you know, what Kickstradamus is and all the releases. So if you could touch on those things, I think it'd be very eye opening for a lot of people to realize how important this actually is in our line of business. I mean, live streaming is what it is now, bro. Right? It's, it's where it's at. You know what I mean? Like, how many times have people been bored at home and like, yo, man, I I, I just want to open some packs. Of, but how how close is is a trading card store to you, really? Yeah. Like, right. It has the stuff that you want. Uh, 
it's still I feel like there's not enough you know the sports card stores out there so I mean for somebody to have um the ability to just like open their phone you know and then uh buy it right there see so see the pack open I mean that's huge right but for me uh it's I've made a ton of money doing a live stream selling you know what I mean I I've built even bigger community from there uh for the longest time um I I wasn't even really pushing it on my social media I was just building it organically through through the apps and stuff so I mean it's 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 definitely uh it's definitely something that's that's not going anywhere and I think you need to to really take advantage of that you know uh also the discord like you said the discord I've been able to really build a strong cult like following and community in there that's buy sell trade and and you know it's it's very active and uh it's just growing every single day so I mean I think those are all key components if you want to have a successful business today yeah yeah no doubt. Yeah. Um, I, I see the uh, the shirt. I see the figurines behind you. All these things. I, I just wonder, like, what what's your favorite thing to collect? Like, what, what's your your PC look like, or is a big like smorgasbord of uh, a whole bunch of stuff? I've gone through waves, man. I've, done, I've gone through <laughs> stages. You know, I, I had like a really big Funko stage, um, and lately I've just been so busy that I haven't even been able to collect anything. I've just been creating things for people to collect. <laughs> So it's crazy, right? Um, to go from like just buying nonstop a whole bunch of stuff, and now like I'm the guy creating the stuff that people are putting on their shelves. It's really cool. Yeah, that's uh, I've 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 found cards for for Sal because we'll be breaking Marvel one night, and then he'll be talking about sports, and then it's so my my man uh, collects quite a bit. So awesome. we'll have to uh, uh, if if you anybody out there in the Marvel world has any Modoc cards, make sure you uh, you send them Sal's yeah. way. He, that's one and of his Moon Knight boys. too. No, Moon, Moon Knight. Knight. I forgot about Moon Knight. There you go. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's my thing. <laughs> well, um, we're going to see you in about 10 days at the Upstate Card Show. It's, uh, it's an honor. It's a privilege to have you come out from Sacramento to Spartanburg. But it, the Upstate is, is, uh, is a really cool group of collectors. People love you. And, and the funny thing was, I, I think I told you about this, Sal. I was at a card show there three months ago. And it was in a mall. Tiny card show, Sal. It was like maybe 50 tables. And I walk up to some table, and he has all these Kickstarter's kicks for his cards. And I go, "Wait, you have kicks for his cards?" Like, and he and he and he goes, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." Like, I've been following him. I've been collecting. Like, wasn't this card cool? Like, he had cracked eyes and all stuff. I think it was from uh, the Galactic Universe uh, set. But it, it's really fun to see like his brand is everywhere, yeah. right? You know what I mean? And you know, in the in the south of of, of California and Sacramento, North California, as well as the south of the United States. So it's fun to see how your brand's expanded. We're gonna have a drop at the show. We have three cards that we're dropping that you have designed. It's the Jordan uh take of the Fleer rookie card. It's the Acuna rookie card and then it's of course a cool Steamboat Willie. So these cards are gonna be in a three card set at the show. People will have access to them. They're gonna be limited. You're gonna have your own parallels of those available at your booth. And then you design the T-shirt for the show, which is going to be limited as well. Uh, so it's a it's going to be a, it's going to kick Shadamus flavor as well at the at the Upstate Card Show. But that's just like a drop in the bucket because my man's got something coming up this weekend, and I I would love for you to talk a little bit about the New York Comic Con, the spectacle that it is, man, and what this means for you, man, and what you're doing at the Comic Con. As you can see, I'm like, you know, stretching my neck because I've been working nonstop for the last <laughs> few weeks for this, but um. New York Comic Con is is gonna be crazy. Uh, it, every year I, I do some exclusive stuff for it, but uh, something about this year's show is just really different. You know, uh, uh, we'll start off with me uh, launching my first official comic book. You know, at New York Comic Con, and uh, and there's I've been able to kind of really build up this character that I played off of the the public domain of Steamboat Willie. I called him Drippy Willie. It's kind of a more modern, edgy take on on the original Steamboat Willie, something more like for the hype beast and the streetwear culture and and you know that the the premium luxury st uh aesthetic that I have on it. But um I'm actually bringing the the knowledge and what I've been able to create with the collectible trading cards into the comic world, so they're very excited to see what happens with that. So the way that I'm releasing these books is going to be the same way I release cards where every single book is numbered, 
there's certain parallels, you know, and, and, you know, it's first come first serve. And I've kind of built like this crazy, um, I don't even know what I would call it, but when I drop something on the website, it's gone within seconds, you know what I mean? So it's kind of, uh, it's exciting to see where, where this comic will, will go at this show. Aside from that, I'm dropping my first official designer toy, um, Halloween, uh, based, uh, designer toy, uh, there as well, which is huge. And then I got a bunch of exclusive, like numbered, uh, card trading cards that I've made just for this show, a few collabs with a few big artists as well. So there, there's a lot, uh, going on at New York Comic Con and a lot of this will be available, you know, on, on my live streams and stuff. So it's going to be cool to give people all over the country a chance at some of these pieces for sure. So if you're listening now, New York Comic Con, Upstate Card Show, you're going to see Kickster Domus. You're going to be able to have opportunity to get some exclusive items. Jeff, you might want to make the trip up to New York this weekend. Yeah, it would be sweet if, uh, if we have enough Gator, Gator stuff this yeah. coming weekend. Yeah, we'll have to get... I, I'm, I'm an XL on that shirt, by the way. Okay. So we'll see if those. we can cop Jeff a shirt on that one for sure. We'll see what we can do. Uh, it was funny, Sal, going back. I usually wear hats, and Jeff has always seen me in a Cardinals hat or, or a Bucks hat. And so I had I was repping your hat not too long ago, and uh, he goes... Who's this Kick Shadamas guy? I said, just wait. You'll see. You'll get to meet him. So, um, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's exciting, man. And, and I think that's kind of the reaction I get from a lot of people is they're like, who's Kick Shadamas? What's Kick Shadamas? And then they introduce you to the, the product first, and then people get to know you. And, and it's going to be cool. So I'm sure you'll be signing autographs in Comic-Con New York as well as Upstate Card Show. People get to meet you, take pics, and just kick it with you and, and, and tell you how much they appreciate what you've been doing. So um, I, I know you got a lot going on. I, uh, I want to close out our segment with a, a rapid-fire segment that I've put together for you. Uh, uh, you answer with first thing that comes to mind. Are you cool with that? Absolutely. Let's do it. All right. So this is the Titan MRI Muley Pod rapid fire question with the one and only Kick Shadamas. Here we go. Favorite anime? Man, I'm going Dragon Ball Z, man. Ooh, OG. I like it. Yeah. Uh, what's the best collectible, Sal? A pair of shoes, a comic book, or a trading card? Best? If we're if we're we're talking about where where the game is at today is gonna be the trading card man, the trading card is crazy. Plus you could like fit a ton of trading cards in the wall, you know what <laughs> I mean? So I mean it's all about real estate now. Uh, comic books are a little bigger, but those do pretty damn well too. And the shoes, I mean, people are always wearing shoes, so I I don't think there's any any wrong way. But uh, right now, if I had to pick one, it's the trading card for sure. Being a card guy, I think you're right on that one. Um, all right, will we ever see? A Nostradamus, Kickstradamus collaboration. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, man. But but uh, I'm doing pretty good uh, solo right now. So I don't think I don't think there might be a need for that one. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see one day. I like it. Um, what's a young quarterback that you think will have the best career? Because I know you love your sports, but his name cannot end in Mahomes. I like C.J. Stroud, man. I really like C.J. Stroud. There's a sick, sick, sick C.J. Stroud mashup you did with uh, Kaboom and Captain America, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That one was fun. Make sure yeah, you go yeah. check out his uh, page, man. For It's, it's so cool. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll impose it on the screen here for the for the podcast. We'll show the folks that one. All right. What's your uh, favorite shoes ever? Man, I got to go with, like, the OG Pippins, man. That was my first Pippins. pair of Nikes. Wow. Yeah, that was my first pair of Nikes. So I, I wouldn't even take those off when I was little. i just sleep with them. <laughs> we all remember our first pairs of Nikes, man. Yep. That's awesome. All right, next 10 years. You got a whole 10 years ahead of you. Do the Kings light the beam and in the NBA Finals? Man, you know, I love the Kings, man. But it, it's like, I don't know. The West just keeps getting stronger. I feel like they need a true center so they can move Sabonis to the four because he, he'll overpower anybody at the four. If they could do that, then they might have a chance. I think they have a chance, but they need that that solid center. You know what I'm saying? That defensive big man. I like so. that. Add uh, add GM to the resume. Maybe yeah. make it work. We might we might have a, we might have him uh, in the front office and it's at the at the Beam Center. So, um, <laughs> all right. It could be sports or it could be TCG. But what is the most iconic trading card that you can think of? Man, I probably had to go with like 
Charizard, man, first edition. I mean, that's just like everybody knows that shit, you know, <laughs> or everybody knows that. <laughs> yeah, Charizard's Charizard's the. Uh, I mean, the Mickey Mantle they call him. I mean, he's yeah. it's just it's just such a uh, unique card. And honestly, like you grew up in that era, I grew up in that era. Like we didn't really have a lot of cards that were iconic, and that was iconic in the late '90s to the early 2000s, where like if you had that, you were the stuff, right? You were the cat's meow. I traded I traded my Sega Genesis for a Charizard <laughs> when I was little, and I mean that Charizard is probably worth a ton today, but I don't know what happened to it. <laughs> <laughs> That's always a story. That's always a story. All right, a couple more questions here. I want to know the best place to get a street taco in Sacramento. Oh man, you got to go downtown, bro. I live out in the outskirts. I live in Roseville, so I'm like 30 minutes out. So I mean, I, I'm only getting that when I go downtown, but. There's a few like taco stands out there that, that are pretty good, but like where I'm at, you ain't getting no real tacos. <laughs> what do you what do you put on your what do you put on your taco by the way? Follow up to that. I put everything, man. I gotta have that red sauce too. You gotta do it right. Red sauce key. <laughs> All right. Your most memorable moment in sports ever, like watching it, being a fan, what would you say? Ooh, uh, most memorable. Hmm. Watching it, probably like that that uh, Derek Fisher three pointer. Ooh, that point point four. Yeah, that, that 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 I was watching that. I was a huge Laker fan at that time. Uh, I'm not a big LeBron fan, so I had to kind of jump ship. I'm here in Sac. I, I know I, I'm friends with a lot of the Kings guys, so it was um, it just made sense. But uh, yeah, I'm not I'm not a King James fan. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> no, I was so I grew up on Kobe. I grew up on yeah, Kobe. So Kobe's yeah. Kobe's king. Another thing that people don't know about Sal. Big Jokic fan, right? Okay. I mean, you you uh, yeah, yeah. you love his game, right? Yeah, he's the goat. I, I can't wait to see Luca and him play together one day. I know it's gonna happen. That's <laughs> sweet. <That'd be laughs> wild, I know it's right? Gonna happen. It it will happen. I bet you it will. All right, man. You've almost sur survived the Titan MRI rapid fire segment. I got one more question for you. I know I mentioned it earlier. Little kicks. He's a little hustler, and he's learned from pops. So, what is one piece of business advice that you would pass on to a younger generation today? Just don't give up. You know what I mean? Uh, don't worry about what everybody else says. You know, I had a lot of people like uh, I would be at parties or anywhere and people would ask me, what are you doing? I said, I, I paint sneakers. I paint shoes and they'll laugh like, mm. <laughs> paint sneakers. <laughs> like what is that? <laughs> you know, uh, but I stuck with it. Even, even some of my family was like, are, are you sure this is what you want to do? Like, you know, and I get it. Like people don't don't. I mean, it. it it's a lot of work, and you have to have a very special talent talent to stick out and and really get to where I'm at today doing it. Um, but I mean, if you put enough time in the work in and you're consistent, then you you could do whatever you want. Like well, I probably shouldn't be where I'm at today, so I mean I'm here with the hard work, you know. That's right. Well, it shows. I mean, it pays off. And uh, for people who, who who haven't met Sal, this is your first time. You kind of get an intro to Craig Thomas. This is one of the hardest working guys. In the collectible space, uh, bar none, I see him always grinding on stuff. So when he says work hard, that literally means all the time. So keep that in mind. It's some nuggets there you drop, man. Listen, we would we'd love to talk to you for hours, and we'd love to get you to to make shoes for us, and we love we do all these things. But you are a busy man. <laughs> you uh, you have the Comic Con coming up. You have Upstate Card Show after that. You have brands. You have trading card spaces. Me and you might have some 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 news down the line to talk about with that. A little, a little um, special surprise, yeah. Little surprises down the <laughs> line. Um, but I mean, it just uh, hats off to you, brother, and, and keep doing what you're doing. I'm so excited to see you in about ten days, and we'll have fun at the uh, Upstate Card Show, man. Appreciate you guys, man. Uh, pleasure. Ha uh, thank you guys for having me. Actually, so yeah. I really appreciate it. Cool. Keep grinding, man. That's awesome. Appreciate you. All right, Thank you, that Jeff. is the, uh, the the great Kickstradamus. Again, so many ways that you can uh, check out his stuff, the uh, the live streaming. And, of course, uh, if you're up in the New York area, make sure you find that show. Some really cool drops that are uh, happening there, and you can see them down in Spartanburg if you're, uh, you're down in this area. And that's what it is. I, I think, you know, again, fascinated by all the people that, come on here and just the the, the hustle the grind just yeah. the the work ethic and, and the want to become what they are and, and just put out special stuff and you could just you could tell he really 
enjoys it and he's passionate about it. And I think that's more than anything that we can ask for. Authenticity, right? I mean, yeah. That's the key you want in the hobby, in the hobby space. And so that's who Sal is. That's what Kickstradamus is. Make sure you guys are following him at, uh, at Kickstradamus on Instagram. You can see all his amazing art and work that he's done. Um, or go visit him at these these events that he goes. He doesn't go to many events, so make sure you go check him out at these, these events. The chance for sure. All right, we're going to take a break. We'll come back with uh, another segment, episode 20 of the Mealy Pod Hobby Podcast. Things have certainly got a little out of hand lately when it comes to just buying our everyday necessities. Just look at gas, streaming services, and heck, even chicken wings. Well, there is one necessity that shouldn't cost a ton. Taking care of yourself and helping fix all the aches and pains in life, and the fine folks at Titan MRI agree. With costs a fraction of what you'd pay at a hospital, you'll not only save money, you'll be taken care of by staff with over 20 years experience. So when you need an MRI, call Titan first, and you can go where your doctors send their families. Now offering CAT scans. All right, great stuff there from uh, Kickstradamus. Always need to uh, just to, to see the people that you've run into, you've you've made friends over the years, and um, it's it's just fascinating how many you know people there are all over the country that are these go getters and just want to do better and you know come up with stuff. It's awesome. The West Coast vibes too, you know, yeah. from from Sal and uh, excited to have him at the Upstate Card Show. It's really a treat, you know, these cards that he's designing and drops they call it you know it's all new to me but this drop of these three cards three card set which is going to be limited and then we haven't even really talked about it but what's the secondary market on some of this stuff yeah. if you look on ebay and you see some of his stuff it does sell and he's going to have limited cards he's going to he made t-shirts for the event so not just merch but you have cards and all things that are going to be happening at this show that's going to be coming to an area that's east coast you know far away in the southeast so a little little <laughs> different flavor uh for sal but um yeah just just a great guy and he's just made made a, an amazing brand for himself yeah from uh sacramento to the uh south carolinas <laughs> it's uh, it's kind of crazy for sure all right always uh, crazy to see what comes out each and every week it is time to uh open up some wax and again if uh, you're enjoying this make sure you tell your friends about it watching on facebook and uh YouTube and all those great things to uh, be able to allow us to get the word out there and show you how cool this hobby really is and certainly learn things each and every week uh, about it. But I have uh, learned that there are some some good gets and uh, each mm. and every week. And you know the cosmic stuff last week was really, really cool. But I see uh, a baseball product here uh, hunting me down. There it is, buddy. Paul Skeen's rookie card. Ooh. 2024 Tops Update Baseball is here. So I figured today, since we're doing the wax segment, there's a lot of wax to talk about. I'm going to open this box and okay. let you get your, your bear paws in here okay. and just start ripping. Uh, so as you guys know, Tops Update is the, the, the kind of update set where they, they kind of make a decision on who they're going to put in as a rookie card. Skeen's being the kind of the main one that people are after. You get a, a green pack, it is. They call them the silver packs, but a green pack, which has the chrome stuff in. And uh, there's a lot of lot of chases in this. I think it'll be interesting to see what Skeen's uh, rookie cards do in the offseason because obviously season's over. I do see him being very relative, not just the Libby Dunn factor, but just like he's at the LSU game this weekend, yeah. right? He's being, he's put in, you know, the limelight. He's and talking so, to recruits. And right. I mean, it's, everything. LSU's really gotten that, that hype thing figured out. You know what I mean? We could take some notes from that here in Gainesville. But so, so how many times do we see cards come out in sets like this after the season whereas you know they didn't make that rookie card beforehand do those go are these better because they're separate and now everybody's chasing it because they didn't realize he was going to be so good or do you see both ways happen i just think it's more of a chase of like the rookie cards that people couldn't get in series one series two okay. right so that's what they made update for there will be and they started this two years ago and tops update chrome that will come out in a hobby version as well. And those have those patch autos with the MLB yep. debuts that they throw in there. So a lot of fun things coming up. As you guys know, Tops, you know, is just kind of the flagship product. Uh, update boxes are running right now. I think at about 125 to 135, you can check out mealypops.com, semealypops.com, which is wild to me because usually these boxes are about 100 bucks. And so we're starting to see a rise in the flagship products, the the price point of Series 1, Series 2, and this. And I, the, the reason why I think this is happening is because wax has ex accelerated in value. Mm -hmm. um, you're seeing a, a bigger price point come out on the wholesale side from Fanatics. I think what people are doing is they're reverting back to, hey, let me get into the boxes that I'm not going to break the bank in. And even if it is 20 or $30 more, I'm still going to get into that. So you're seeing jumbos around 275 300 which typically are 225 okay. Um But anyway, I want you to right. get sink your yeah. teeth into some of that, show it off, and, and I'll talk about some of the new wax. There you go. Get, get a skeins for us. Another big uh, release, Jeff, this week is uh, 23-24 Origins WNBA Basketball. So it is the first licensed Panini product 
that will have WNBA stars, including, as everybody knows, Miss Caitlin Clark. So that'll be interesting to see how expensive these cards are. There's only going to be three releases this entire year with WNBA. It's going to be Origins, then Select, and then Prism. Select boxes are selling for $800 pre-order right now, and people are estimating Prism boxes to be at the $1,000 to $1,200 range. So I'm I'm really blown away with the fact that WNBA has just that kind of fanaticism still going. Um, so we'll see what happens with Origins WNBA. Um, Caitlin Clark, Angel Reese, uh, Cam Brink, Rakia Jackson, all that rookie class will be very interesting. Of course, Asia Wilson and Brianna Stewart and all those other other folks, the vets are in there. Um, but we'll, we'll see how that first release kind of pans out. You got a gold? Who'd you get there? Ooh, Ooh a little Churio. That's a good one. That is that you can put that in the PC, buddy. Yeah, that'll be uh that'll be a good one. So Churio's got Churio. a rookie card in here. You got skeins in there. 20-year-old. Yeah. Doing some damage. He's 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 had a pretty good year. Did a really good year. And um, all central. Not I'm not happy about that though. Yeah, you know, that's... having all these studs come in outside. Well, the and that's what's crazy. And again, I think we're starting to see that in major league playoffs. Again, Phillies, they win the division, get the bye, don't win. You know, Milwaukee, same thing. You just all these teams that are yeah playing in the wild card and getting hot at the right time or yeah. kind of the significant ones. Do you want the, uh, the subway series? Do you want uh, Yankees Mets again? I, I mean, I think the Dodgers are going to be around for a long time, right? I mean, Kershaw's yeah. not even playing for them right now. If you I think know. about that, right? Like, I think they're going to be around for a long time. Uh, Kershaw's another interesting study with cards if we ever want to get into it. But I, I think it'd be really cool to see. Uh, I would just like to see the Mets in the World Series. I think that's what I'd like to see. Because Pete, you know, just the Gator, the Gator, just what he was able to do hitting that home run to get them where they're at. Um, I think it'd be awesome to see the Mets. The Grimace factor is, is just really fun for baseball. Um, we've seen those videos where Grimace is entering the subway. So we'll see. Are you want, Are you a Subway Series kind of guy? You I think it'd it? be fun. Yeah. And, and speaking of Yankees, I got uh -oh. a little... Uh... A mystical uh, Ooh, Aaron that's cool. Judge a little judge that action. Be. That's a little insert action. I think it's a, a cool pair. That's a new parallel for that. Is it a panda? Yeah. I got going is. on there. A little panda with Aaron Judge. Well, and, you know, this this could be something interesting. For, so, Ooh. same guy. Yep. Same pack. Yep. Two different cards. Look on the back. Let's see what the numbers are. So, we got 108 and 221. So, there's two versions. So they're, they're from the set. They have two different uh, rookies uh, for Andy Pages. I think that one is called a debut rookie card, so okay. that's worth less than the one where than he's back. the real one. Okay. Yeah. So there Makes you go. Sense. Get, get, you get so learn, yeah. so learn on the fly. Unique stuff. As, yeah, keep uh, it going. Keep it go going. All that. Um, another release, another big release that people are always excited about for my hockey friends, 2024-25, Upper Deck Series 1. So again, the Young Guns, the Series 1 of Topps Baseball is, is the Series 1 Upper Deck. Uh, so that's out this week. And then for my non-sports fans, you have the Upper Deck marvel cinematic universe uh set coming out which will be very interesting to see because they're as you guys know upper deck lost the license so we're going to have a lot i call it the autograph dump so a lot of these products are going to have really cool autographs of chris hemsworth and uh chris evans and um you know scarlet witch and uh, elizabeth olsen and all these kinds of uh, you know big name actors tom hiddleston so you're going to see those kind of cards pulled at, a, at an extensive rate and i i think that's going to be fun for for collectors the box price though is pretty high 350 a box but again, if you're a non-sports fan, you'll really enjoy that. Um, and then on the cusp of non-sports, we have a big release coming soon. It's called Star Wars Chrome Galaxy. We'll have to open one of those in shop and kind of show that off because that's a lot of fun. I know Kix probably would like to get to be one of the artists for, for, uh, for sure. that set. But yeah, um, we got that's the wax for this week. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's here. Updates here. You want to you wanna crack the, the silver yeah, pack? Yeah, we need to do that. But I okay. got a, uh -oh. uh, a right-handed rookie. Okay. Pirates pitcher. No, it's it's you're gonna say the other guy. <laughs> Jared Jones. Yeah. <laughs> that's another guy. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't get the skeins yet. Oh, but uh that's uh All no, right, well, that's funny. Let's get into the, the, the big dollar pack. All right. There's sometimes autos in this. Okay. Could could hit a monster, Jeff. Let's make some history here. Ooh. Senga? Senga. Okay. Victor Scott. Okay. Ichiro, one Ichiro. of my uh, favorites Ooh, of all look time. Look at that one. Roberto Clemente. That's cool. That's the uh, those are the what eighty nine. Yeah, they tops? yeah they so they do that as a like a retro. As yeah. they, they do the old Sweet. the old old top. So yeah, there is value in uh, old old nineties wax. There you go. So um, funny story. We had a, a disgruntled customer um, upset because we wouldn't buy their nineties wax recently, and I had to explain like, I'm sorry, man. Like you probably have amazing collection. You know, it's probably awesome cards, but just like. We get offered this five times a week, you know, and yeah. so just uh, it's it's still there, Jeff. There's still people that that uh, that need the education on that. 
All right, last one. We'll see if it's something good. Jack Leiter, okay, from uh, from Vandy. So that's a uh, that's a good one. It's Al Leiter's son, right? It is yep. Al Leiter's son, and he should be up. AJ Puck, former Gator. Parker yeah. Meadows. Oh, there you go, rookie. A little rookie. There you go. And then uh, Clayton Beater, another uh, Yankee rookie. So. The nice thing about updates, you got a lot of rookie cards. So yeah. If, if you is... like rookie cards and you like you know putting players away that you don't necessarily know what they're going to do, it's great rip and it's a, a fair value I think to get a ton of rookie cards. So you did pretty good. No, no auto yet. Maybe we'll keep ripping. But next week, man, we have uh, Javi Lopez on the podcast. Um, you know, he's a Braves. 90s catcher for all of those amazing pitchers on the mm -hmm. Braves in the 90s. Um, also hit pretty well. Um, and I don't know much about his defensive stats. I'll have to go back and look at that. You probably know more on it. But that would be fun. Uh, could you imagine uh, pitching a hobby? You think he'd, 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 he'd lead you the right way? Yeah, to, no, it's, to throw? it's fascinating, the, those times, because just to be able to catch those guys and all the Hall of Famers and everything that they went through and certainly the success. I mean, we see it's really, really hard to – make the playoffs. I mean, it's even easier now, of course, um, with, with the expanded teams, but for the Braves to be that consistent throughout yeah. that entire time. And, you know, that was, I was a, a nineties high school kid. So mid nineties there, I would always go down the Braves spring trained in West Palm beach, which was 20 minutes from my house. So hopefully my dad's not listening to this because I would <laughs> literally not go to school in the mornings and I would drive down there. I'd be in the parking lot, probably like you see now, but I just, I wanted to be around those guys and I would watch sure. them on the backfields and I would, you know, Don Sutton taught me how to throw my curveball oh, cool. into to high school and college just from meeting him. So I got to interact with those guys quite a bit as a kind of a teenager and it was just fun to pick their brain yeah. on different things. And, you know, from the other side, I, I found it fascinating too, because Every time Javi Lopez would come out, and I don't know if we should ask him this, but you just hear women screaming <laughs> left and right. Like it was, it was hunky Javi Lopez uh, coming around. So yeah, he was a fan favorite by uh, by many many people. I'm sure some great stories from how awesome those dudes were. So what Jeff's saying is tune in next week because we'll get some uh, some hunky Javi Lopez stories. That's right. Um, I like that 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 uh, nickname there. Yeah, certainly so. All right, well that'll do it for this week. We'll finish this up. We'll tell you next week. Uh, how many schemes we got and which uh, autograph we got, and uh, you'll be jealous. But uh, we appreciate you listening once again. This was episode 20 for us. So, again, tell your friends, share it all. We are in the podcast room of Spurrier's Gridiron Grill, brought to you by Meldon Law. They won't back down, and we won't back down. We'll get Javi next week and uh, many more fun things to come on the Mealy Pod Hobby Podcast. Thank you for joining us. We will see you next Thursday at noon.